Okay, here we are with the printers. This is next day. I decided to get some sleep last night. So I came down this morning and uh, thought I'd pick up where we left off. Okay, all of the printers have finished printing, even the one that we had running overnight, which was uh, this job here. This is uh, going to be a regular running job, more than likely, depending on how well it turns out. But we're printing 11 of these parts right here at one time. Uh, those are the power box or the back of the helping hand power head. There's a compartment where all of the electrical wiring and stuff is and that's the cover plate for it. And um, we'll be able to print 11 at a time on these ANET printers. And it's about an 11 hour run for that, about uh, one hour per part. So, if I ran 20 of these printers, uh, let's see if my math's good, uh, 20 times 11 is 220 um, of these parts. I can, I can make 220 of these parts in 11 hours. Uh, so that would be basically one shift as far as the printers. So, and that's just with 20 of these ANETs. So we're going to be able to produce uh, some pretty large quantities of parts now. So let's hope our sales are good <laughs> because uh, we'll definitely be able to uh, produce a lot of parts. Now, I want to go down the line and evaluate these printers. First of all, I have to understand that almost most all of these printers are brand new. This is the first time that they've actually uh, printed anything. And I did run a test print on one the other day with this same configuration, and I had it online, but with it I had brim around it, a wide band, and I decided, well, normally I don't run production with brim. I try to get adhesion good enough that I don't need it, so I decided not to uh, use it on these parts for this test. It may have been a little bit of a mistake because you have to consider that uh, on since all of these are glass bed and these glass beds for the most part have never been printed on before so what I decided to use was a little bit of hairspray because it's easy and convenient and I haven't had time to test other uh, glue water mixtures and so forth that I've used in the past. Glue sticks are a little too time consuming when you have this many printers. So it, it needs to be something that can go on quickly between jobs. And uh, so that being said, uh, the biggest, the one problem I had uh, with the printers in the test run yesterday was some adhesion problems. Most of the printers fared well and we'll go down and go one by one and see how they did. Okay, we'll call, I'm going to number these printers eventually, but we'll say this is number one. And it looks like it did a pretty good job and the parts come right off. So uh, looks like we had a pretty good job there. I'm going to leave those parts there because I want to actually check it, each individual part very closely. But this printer, we'll call it number two, and oh, we have some pretty good adhesion there. Um, that one looks like it did all right. This one seems to print it all right. That one popped right off. Uh, this will be printer number four and it pops right off. These parts look like they came out all right. Printer number five, part pops right off. Looks like this one printed pretty good. Printer number six, what happened? 
Well, what happened, it printed these two parts, but when it got to a certain height, uh, I lost adhesion on this part here. So I stopped the printer. There wasn't any reason to start all over. I got two good parts out of it. So, now let's go back down and look at the second row. And the, the top row, by the way, these were all ET4s with automatic leveling. And um, the printers on this row are ET4Xs. Uh, they require manual leveling. And this one, the adhesion's still pretty good on that one. I may have to heat this up a little bit. That thing was really, was really stuck on there good. Usually they come off these glass beds a little easier. Um, it's good hairspray. So this would be printer number, if we had eight on the top, this would be printer number nine. It looks like it did ten. Got a little flag on it. Um, Gonna have to look at this one, see what happened, but it's pretty obvious that uh, these two parts printed. When it got to this one, it got to the point to where it broke loose. That means usually when the adhesion isn't real good, and you can tell it isn't because these parts just lift off, but when the adhesion's not real good, sometimes they'll do okay in a low profile. But once they get to a certain height, that little bit of friction on there is enough to knock them loose. And that's what happened here. So, uh, the printer did all right. It's just the adhesion on that one. And let's see. This be printer 10. Part comes right off. It looks like printed pretty good on that job. Number 11, same thing again. It got up here and it... Oh, no, I, I know what happened to this one. This one started um, air printing. What happened, the spool of filament, I came over here and I noticed it was sitting there running and nothing was building. It, the first two parts came out okay, but this one, uh, there wasn't any filament coming through, and I checked, and the spool of filament, where the filament went in to the filament brake sensor, Somehow there was a little gob of, of extruded filament, like this stuff here, that had somehow gotten up on that filament and jammed where it was going into the filament brake sensor back here. So I unjammed that and it started... I was able to get the filament to come through, but I wasn't going to restart the job for that. So that's the problem with that one. One of those kind of fluke things. Okay, we're at 9, 10, 11, 12. This is number 13. 13 was lucky today because did a good job. 14 did a good job. Finished the task. 15. I don't know what happened to 15. Well, yes, I do know. Uh, lost adhesion and started sliding parts all over the <laughs> surface, and I just shut that one down. But again, adhesion problem. And here, this number 16. Looks like we had good adhesion. Parts printed okay. Now we're going to go back down to number 17. Now on this row, these are uh, ET4 Pro printers. And see, they did a good job there. That was uh, 19. This number 20, it did a good job. 21, did a good job. 22, did a good job. 23, did a good job. The Pro printers did really good. And over here, this would be 23. 23 did okay. It's an ET4X. And number 24 got silver flagged here. Again, adhesion. Well, no, this didn't have an adhesion problem. Somehow or another, uh, it offset. 
I started offset printing here. Uh, so something got hung up there. I'll have to do a little testing and see what's going on with this printer. But anyway, there you have it. So the summary or the moral of the story is that we had 13 that had absolutely no problems. Uh, one of them was a special part that job that was printing it had no problems. I had three printers, three printers that I had to restart. After I'd loaded the filament, I hadn't cleaned off the uh, nozzle and I had some gummy stuff go out and it just the very first layer was uh, messy or it looked like I needed a little adjustment on the leveling. So I stopped those jobs, made an adjustment, and then restarted them within a minute or two. So, and then they continued and printed on through. So those are the three restarts. And then the five, they have these little silver tags we talked about, are the ones that didn't completely finish. Most of them did finish at least two of the parts, but they messed up and lost adhesion on the third part. So, overall, I don't think it was a bad day. I think it was, uh, considering brand new printers out of the box, I don't know how many of you uh, get a brand new printer and start printing with it and never have a problem. But in my case, I had my share of problems. And I always have to spend time tweaking these printers. That's why I didn't print a real large complex print job here for my test. I wanted something I could get through quickly. And I'll probably run another test, possibly these same identical parts, because of the parts I can use. And um, But go ahead and run this job again after I've worked on the printers that I've flagged that seem to have some kind of a problem. And it, then after I check the parts, if I see a problem <coughs> with the parts where I have some stringing or something like that going on, then I'll do some more adjustments uh, to correct that. But to have uh, 20 printers or 22 printers running at the same time is pretty good. I did order my proximity sensors today. I ordered some more of those. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to see what's going on with these. I believe it's just the sensor, but um, to have two brand new printers have the same problem out of a batch of about, I think eight of them here that I put together um, that, that's kind of odd. That, that bothers me a little bit that, uh, that that's going on. So I'm going to get to the root of it and I'm going to fix them and see what caused the problem. And, um, <clears throat> so that's about it for the, uh, first run of the print farm, first test run, the printing, um, I think you saw the power over there. It looked like uh, running the 22 printers, since we weren't able to run the two with the problem up here with the sensor, um, we were drawing, it's hard to average because I was taking the, trying to average the two phases and add them together. And it was a little hard to get a good average, but it looked like it's probably somewhere around 16 amps that they were drawing. So 16 amps for 22 printers would probably go up to about 17 amps when you put those on. Now that's when they're running. Now I did, uh, probably I was getting up in the 22, 23 amp range when I was preheating all of the printers. I went over there and checked it real quick in between some of the preheating. And um, so if you're preheating them all at the same time, you're, you're going to draw your maximum power then. 
and it can get up to, um, I think we figured we were getting as high as 10.4 amps on one bank of six. So you could get over 40 amps of current draw if you had enough people in here to start all of these preheating at the same time. Um, by the time I got to the bottom row, the, the top row had already started reaching temperature. So I, I never did get anywhere near 40 amps. I think the maximum I got was somewhere in the 20 amp range, um, probably 25 to 30. Uh, I guess that's about it for now. I'm going to sign off here and